In some Kotlin code bases, you may find yourself wanting to type the double bang operator to force a nullable value to not be nullable anymore. You're basically telling Kotlin, hey, trust me, I know what I'm doing. This can happen for regular primitive nullable types such as the strings, integers, etc., uh, Boolean values, or it can also happen for the nullable objects such as a person object that we have here. Now, there's a way around this. If you don't want to type the double bang operator, you can also use something what is built into the Kotlin standard library, which is called require not null. And require not null basically will turn this value, which if we look at it, into a non-nullable type. If it's null though, it will throw an illegal argument exception, otherwise returns the not null value. So if we run this here, what we'll see is it'll continue to run this fine because we have the length of the, the name this has now been turned into a regular string, not a nullable string. However, if for whatever reason this comes back from an API or a database or something, and that value is null, and we process it, what will then happen is Kotlin will throw an illegal argument exception saying, hey, the required value is null. Now, to be honest, this error message, while helpful, this required value is null. In a large code base, this is not very helpful. This can be kind of like, okay, there was a null value somewhere that we shouldn't have got, where is it at? Okay, let's look at the stack trace. There's a stack trace, let's go investigate it. Sometimes it, it helps to have some additional information inside of there, and so you can do that. There's actually an overload of this, which will allow you to provide a lazy message, uh, which will be the result of that being called. And so it can be a function, and we're just gonna go ahead and use the lambda, and we can say something like, the name should not be null, but it was, exclamation point. And now if I run this, we'll still get an illegal argument exception, but we'll now get the message, the name should not be null, but it was. And you can provide some additional information inside of here, uh, perhaps it might help you debugging uh, if you are throwing an illegal argument exception and you have a crash handler on your application, uh, maybe you have an Android application, this information is gonna show up inside of your, you know, your crash tracking utility. So you might be able to say, hey, here's the value that came in. You could throw additional information inside of here that might help you diagnose what it is. Um, sometimes maybe a backend changed and they are sending a nullable value that was not supposed to be nullable and you're ex not expecting it to be null and things blow up. And so uh, you can just say require not null and that'll get you around it there. Now there's also, you can do the same thing for uh, objects as well, not just primitive types. So we have this person here, perhaps we don't want to use a double bang operator here. We can go ahead and say require not null. And again, it's just going to take this object and make it to this not null type. And there we go. And if we run that, everything should run accordingly, except we're going to get that exception. So let's fix that. That's the exception from up here. So we'll just say Don. And if we run this now, we'll see that we get the Dawn, which is down here in the bottom, which is from this print line down here. So we can actually just go ahead and get rid of that to make it easier. And then if for whatever reason, this person was null, same thing happens here. So you can say require not null on an actual class, you'll get the same thing, the required value was null. Again, just like the other version, it's the same exact thing. You can put some other message here, you know, so hi, hi friends. Not that you would wanna do this in production, but this basically, oops, and that needs to be inside of a Lambda. So that just needs to be there. And then it'll actually show up in there. So hi friends, you can put any message you want inside there. So person should not be null. There we go. And then once you run it, you'll see that the person should not be null. And that's how you can use require not null inside of your application.